Thank you everyone for joining me here at Evolutionary Energy Arts. The number 40. Now the number 40 is all over the Bible. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. After his resurrection, he appeared to the disciples for 40 days. There is so many things. Moses remains on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses is 40 years old when he flees into the Midian Desert. Punishments are not to exceed 40 lashes. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights in, in Noah's flood. Prophet Ezekiel lies on his side for 40 days, symbolically bearing Judah's sins. King Solomon reigns for 40 years. King Saul reigns for 40 years. King David reigns for 40 years. God, God vows to make Egypt desolate for 40 years. The Israeli wanderer in the wilderness for 40 years. So 40, 40, 40. Now it's not just that. There's other numbers too, such as 12. You know, 12 disciples, 12 tribes. And the 12 is just so easy to see what we're relating to in numerologically. The 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. You know, it's it's basically showing completion in a sense, um, a divine number. And when you look at numerology, you know, three is a divine number, four is manifestation on the world plane, so three times four is twelve, and that's a combination of the two thereof. Forty days and forty nights. So what is this forty pointing to then? You know, you always numerologically break things down and add them together, so it comes down to a root number of four, which again is kind of a number of manifestation in some ways. Um, this is one take on the number 40 and it's saying that we're ready to build our higher consciousness, one that's developed on all levels of living, again all levels uh, both the spiritual and the physical. The number 40 destiny number individuals know of four levels of consciousness namely reason, order, measurement, and judgment. There's also the understanding that they must respond to four spiritual laws, mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual, and the laws of justice and right. The number 40 is always on patience and order, the ultimate number of a system, order, and management. It's neutral and it's extrovert, related to the planet Uranus and to the star sign Taurus. The tarot card represented of, of the 40 energy is the emperor. So. 40 is is definitely an interesting number and as we had said the Bible is full of this numerology full of it like for instance the number of the beast 666 six is divine imperfection your human imperfection it's it's the as imperfect as you could get six where seven is a perfect number and coincidentally there's 66 books in the Bible it's not perfect and it's intentionally not perfect and we're being told that through the scriptures. So when we look at the number 40, we end up realizing that 40 is the number of a key Babylonian god, Sumerian god, Enki, Ea, King Anu's eldest and wisest son via a concubine. So his number in rank is 40. So he is, according to the Babylonian myths, you know, he is really the creator of, of mankind. Now, not the ultimate creator, but the creator of this version of mankind, a creator of us, Homo sapiens sapiens. Now, his spouse was Ninka or Dominka or Damkina. And he is the son of Anu and Arash. Arash was a concubine, so he was kind of illegitimate. And that's part of, you know, why Enlil um, ends up being ranked higher. And Enlil's number is 50, and Anu's number is 60. And it goes by rank. And eventually, Marduk, throughout that area, ends up being 50, um, usurping Enlil so power. And some, some sources say Marduk is the son of Enki. The, it gets very, very confusing because depending on where and when, they will give different genealogies. Now, 
Enki is the wisest of the gods. He wrote his own biography, tales of his contributions to Earth. He was the mag master engineer, the keeper of the Mies, the disks of knowledge. He was the god over the waters, the ruler of the Absu, builder of ships. He mined gold in South Africa and shipped it in bulk to Enlil. At the first moon eclipse was Enki's symbol, later discarded as Nanar Sin or Allah took on the moon crescent symbol and Nanar Sin Allah is the god of Islam and has the crescent moon symbol now he was a watery god half fish half man uh, and you know also known as Dagon and some say that Dagon was his right hand man or somebody that served him but it's also thought that that was also possibly Enki himself. You know, and some people like this one thinks it's Enki in a wetsuit. So his patron city was Eridu, first city built, place on the water. His temple, a residence was there. Ia Enki is he who home is water, is accredited with forming the rivers and draining the marshlands. And of course, Enlil was his rival brother and uh, was King Enu's heir. So there was always wars going on with Enki and Enlil. You know, maybe not outright wars, but there was always rivalry, big time rivalry. And Enki had six main sons, Marduk, Nergal, Ning Ninagal, Gibil, Toth, and Demuzi, and others. And it's in very interesting when you start looking into these things think about the symbol for jesus what is the symbol for jesus it's it's the fish as well and then we have dagon the fish god of egypt also known as oans when we go into the greek traditions and oans was a name given by the babylonian writer barosus in the third century bc to a mythical being who taught mankind wisdom Barosus describes Oans as having a body of a fish, but underneath the figure of a man. He is described as dwelling in the Persian Gulf and rising out of the waters in, in the daytime and furnishing mankind instruction in the writing and the arts and various sciences. Oans and the Semitic god Dagon were considered identical, but not until long after those gods were formally worshipped. This belief was popularized by the medieval Jewish commentator Rashi and in Dante's Inferno, but has been discarded by mo modern scholars. The name Oans was once conjectured to be derived from that of the Babylonian god Ea, but it is now known that the name is the Greek form of the Babylonian Uana or Uan, a name used for Uda Adapa in the text from the library of Ashurbanipal. The Assyrian texts attempt to connect the word to the Akkadian for craftsmen, Umanu, but is merely a pun. So it's very interesting how these are all related. And then of course, when you start thinking about teaching mankind and blessing mankind, you think of Prometheus. And I've seen many people who believe that Prometheus and Ea Enki are the same. And that some way, shape or form, Jesus uh, also comes from them, whether or from him, whether it's a reincarnation, a son, uh, there are so many thoughts to it, but there's definitely a connection there. The Prometheus Titan God of Greek mythology who was entrusted to mold mankind out of clay, son to Lapitos and Clymene, brother to Epimetheus, Atlas, and Minotaeus. Very intelligent, the one looking forward, greatest friend for mankind. The symbol was creative fire, which was his precious gift to the dying people. And so, you know, Prometheus gave us knowledge, and Enki gave us life, and Enki always fought for us, and, you know, Enlil didn't seem to have any regard for humans. But the connection between 40 being so many times coming up in the Bible and the fact that in the assembly of gods Ea's number is Ea Enki his number is 40 coincidence or more than a coincidence 
I want to hear your thoughts on this. Please thumbs up, subscribe and share if you haven't subscribed yet and please do share. Let's get to the bottom of this together and I look forward to what your thoughts are on all this. Thank you for uh, joining the Evolutionary Energy Arts family and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care.